Welcome to another episode of I Know Jax. I'm Joe Talentino. Today I have a super duper show ready for you. It's October and we're in the midst of festival season plus football season is in full swing. And there are lots of Oktoberfests and fall festivals going on. But today we're going to start by talking about a little something else that's happening this month. Halloween. When I was a kid, I used to love Halloween. I didn't like the costume part back then either. I guess I never really enjoyed dressing up, but I did like to collect candy. And I think the best part about Halloween is that it's all of a sudden okay to scare people. <laughs> and as a young boy, I really enjoyed all the monsters, zombies, and the really spooky part of Halloween. Tricks, not treats. Every year, the Caddyshack Ranch celebrates Halloween, and for them, it's a big fundraiser for their big cat rescue. Caddyshack Ranch is a wildlife sanctuary, a forever home for big cats. Okay. And I'm not talking cats that are a little bit overweight, big cats, tigers <laughs> and lions. Oh, gotcha. Leopards, panthers. And of course, uh, as a safe forever home, because we want to make sure we keep the responsibility and the care for the animals the rest of their life. Some of these animals you've gotten from different places. Give me a little idea of where you get sure. some of these guys from. Most of the animals that we have have come from zoos that have closed. Not all zoos are city funded. Right. So what happens a lot of times is a lot of places rely on grants. Right. And I can say thankfully that we've never done that. Right. We've been able to enlarge and grow without any of that type of uh, funding. Wanting to make sure that we had the capability on our own and not relying on that. Right. That's what happens. The funding gets cut on these places, and then what happens is they have to start liquidating. Yeah, that's never good for the place or the animal. That's correct. And what happens is, is anything that has a dollar value gets sold out and shipped somewhere. Right. The animals that are left are animals that somebody obviously didn't want to pay for, but we take the responsibility in making sure that they're going to have a good rest of their life. That's, that's super cool. Now, you guys take the opportunity when people come out here to visit to teach, right? I mean, that's a it's big a, part of what you do here. It is teaching. amazing, and it's not just because we're trying to teach about big cats, but the environment sure. and, and the wild. It's so important that it's a big, huge part of our lives every day. Right. One of the first times I came out here, you had some little kittens. <laughs> 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 yeah. Those little kittens are big now. That was five years ago. It's hard for me to believe and, that. And it doesn't take long. <laughs> I tell every time it rains, the water yeah, they're just plants like, and they start growing. You know? so, they're uh, like gremlins. They are exactly. <laughs> just in time for just in time for Halloween. <laughs> and they're still growing. They're huge, as yeah. you saw. Oh, I know. It's and amazing. of course, it's a, what I tell folks is it's a huge responsibility. We do keep our Wednesday nighttime feeding. Okay, cool. We wanted to do that because so many people are interested in coming to see the animals that it's one of our busiest times yeah. from six to seven the front gates are open people flow in to get a guided tour around all the animals and then they watch the animals get fed over 500 pounds of food gets fed out in a matter of 30 to 45 minutes it doesn't go anywhere but their mouth how awesome is that <laughs> Now you talk about volunteers, and one of the things vol the volunteers have helped you guys do is what you're doing special for Halloween. That's right. Talk to me about that. The Haunted Forest is great, and it's been huge and getting better every year. Crafts and games underneath the building when you come in, it's all part of it. All the animals, now they're not in costume, <laughs> but they're all out looking to see the kids in costumes. Sure. That excites them. And then, of course, uh, a haunted trail in the, in the woods, which is optional. Right. We make it optional because some folks don't really want to get scared, but we keep the, the theme going all throughout. If you're afraid of clowns, don't come. Don't come. That's right. That's right. And who's the biggest clown walk, here? I, I, well, maybe me, I guess, probably, yeah. <laughs>
The reason you guys do this haunted forest too is also to get more people to come in to raise funds to do all this. That's right. right. This is a huge cost. People don't realize yeah. sometimes about not only food, medicines, and building supplies are so all expensive. All these sure. things as we're growing, and this is a big fundraiser for us. It, it's a huge event for children and families. I, I have a lot of people say, wow, that's not very expensive, $5 for kids and $10 for adults. But we try to make it a family event when sure. you have children at Gad's Up yeah, yeah, and yeah, have the capability to do crafts and games yeah. and no extra cost. Right. And then if you want to take the Haunted Trail, it's not an extra fee, right. but to have Just that opportunity while you're, while you're out and still get to see all the animals and enjoy them all. <laughs> So you gotta I teach me the titles, you know. That, that. I know that's the chest, right? Uh-huh, and they were asking if you were the treat, and I told them no. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs>just love the big cats. It's so fascinating to me. I have cats at home and I can actually see the similarities between them. But when you go out for a night feeding, you quickly realize that these big cats are beautiful to look at. And even though they look like they'd be cuddly, you realize that they are after all, not like my pets at all. These are big cats that deserve a lot of respect. The Sh Caddy Shack Ranch is looking to expand and taking care of these animals requires funding. So when you have friends and family visiting, go out and visit and make sure you support them. You can check out their website at caddyshack.org for all the details about ours and about how you can help. Today I'm visiting One Ocean Hotel and Azarea Restaurant inside. It's a great little spot right here on the ocean. And we're gonna make a scallop dish, right? Yes, sir. What do you call it? It's got a fancy it's name, right? Fancier Diver Sea Scallop. Let's go with that. All right. <laughs> Show me how it's made. So here I have a blend of olive oil and salad oil. Okay. And why the blend? The blend is the flavor of the olive oil, but you can't use straight olive oil because it'll burn. Ah, it got has a, uh, of the a lower smoking point. Gotcha. Chef Byron adds the trumpet mushrooms to the pan. Actually, he's a hardcore multitasker with three pans on the stove at the same time. He adds the scallops and the cauliflower with a little extra vegetable broth. Those look tasty already. I wish we had smell-o-vision. Uh, yeah, I say uh, screw virtual reality, man. I want the smell-o-vision. He adds stock to the scallops and turns the heat down. He also adds a little bit of butter. Butter makes everything better. Well, we are in the South, my man. Two things, butter and bacon, and I notice you got bacon in here as well. Now it's time for the truffle cream sauce with shaved shallots and elephant garlic. Along with that, I'm gonna put some jumbo asparagus, some double smoked bacon, some roasted corn. You get that sauteed it's up. It's all in the wrist, right? It's all in the wrist. <laughs> Saute actually translates into the jump. <laughs> oh, does it? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes. A little bit of vegetable broth, tomatoes, and a touch of cream. One of my favorite things to cook is seafood. And scallops are nothing sweeter than a, than a nice jumbo scallop. Absolutely. And then along with the cream, because we're into the fall season, so you want a little bit of stuff a little bit heavier than also we're in the south, so the bacon nice. goes in along with that. <laughs> yeah. Here we like to call it uh, First Coast Cuisine. First Coast Cuisine. I like it. I'm going to finish it off with a tiny bit of truffle oil. The truffle oil you have to be very careful with because it's very potent. It's easy to overwhelm it, yes, yeah. Yes, sir. He lets that reduce and it's time for the cauliflower puree. That is not Pepto Bismol, that is cauliflower that puree. That is heirloom cauliflower puree. I that didn't was actually, know they had pink cauliflower. Well, it was actually purple. It was purple, okay. 
Oh, that looks, that looks almost edible, Chef. It's very edible. <laughs> edible art. Very delicate. Very delicate dish. Take a lot of care with these. Yep, a lot of love and care. Like love and layers care. Layers of love. Yes, it is. Man, I wish you guys could smell this. Not, I'm not, you know, well, I'm just saying. They have to come here. I guess here. you have to come here firsthand and, and, and come, eat it. come here and eat it. You get special treatment if, they, if you say Joe sent you. Yeah, As in, in, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> you give everybody special treatment. Everybody's VIP here. So what kind of sprouts are these? This right here is a pea tendril. A little color, maybe a little spice. But they have a tiny bit of spice to them. The pea tendrils are very, have a little bit of bitter bitterness to them. Gotcha. And then the sweet cream sauce will set that off. And here we go. Wow. Yes, your it's it's almost too pretty to eat, but I'm not going to say no. You know, that's how that works. Yes, I'd love for you to try it. <laughs> When you visit Azrae, I suggest you get a seat where you can see the ocean, or if you can't go out on the patio because it is beautiful. There's nothing better than eating fresh seafood right here on the First Coast. We're down in Ybor City and I'm visiting Cigar City Cider and Mead and I got Jared here who is the master brewer or mazer or what is it we call it? Mazer slash cider maker. Cider maker. And um, well we're going to take a little sample of everything here I think it yep. seems like. Take me through it. Uh, this is our traditional cider. Uh, we okay. kind of designed it after a traditional English dry cider uh, with a little bit of American twist, so it's got a little bit more sweetness than you would find in uh, traditional uh, English ciders. But it's nice, clean, crisp, refreshing, very tasty. Very tasty. So give it a taste. Yeah. I just want to keep drinking this one. I guess we should go on. Yeah. <laughs> what, do we have, what do we have here? I actually suggest that we start over here with, okay. the, with the rest of the ciders. Okay. The first one is uh, a lychee lime treatment that I did. Uh, when we just taste beer, they say light to dark. And you said with... Dry to sweet. Dry to sweet. Okay. So, so the lychee lime um, has got very nice characteristics. You get a little bit of the tropical lychee flavors with a little bit of the tartness of the lime come through. It's quite delicious. Um, I think it's going to be quite successful as well. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. I love cider. Next up, the Cowboy Dance Caramel Extravaganza. That's a caramel apple in a glass. Yep. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I like sweet stuff. So wow. You can take my man card away, but I'll drink this anyway. <laughs> Next, we move over to the meads, starting with Vincente. That's 7.3% uh, orange blossom honey, and I put a ton of Madagascar bourbon vanilla beans in it, so it tastes like, oh, a, okay. tastes like a cream soda. <laughs> Cream soda, I'm digging that. I, I, I'm one of those, I sniff everything. Oh, that's oh, that the course. dog in me? Maybe no, that's no, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh my gosh, yeah. Light, clean, refreshing. Very, very, very light. Now some of the crazier stuff that I've done. Um, that's, <laughs> the next one is called Bad Politics. That Bad is, Politics? That is sourwood honey. Uh, okay. That is uh, lactobacillus fermentation. Okay, so let's see what that's all about. That's like sweet sour together. Sweet, you get a little bit of the lactic bite on the finish. Yeah, weird. I've never had anything like that before. I've, I've done mellow mills, hydro mills, pine mints, uh, any kind of fruit that I can mix into it, I'll do it. I was just gonna uh, ask, I mean, can you do mead or, or cider from any fruit? Or? No, ciders are all come are all based from apples. Always apples. So okay. anything that I do to it, it's primarily got to be a, so an apple base. So what's the deal with all these strawberry and all the weird things that you see in the stores? Well, that's all fake. That's, well, I wouldn't necessarily say fake, but it's, um, it's all basically... <laughs> Marketing gimmick. <laughs> right, right. They're, uh, we can call it what it is. <laughs> they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to draw in a more, more of, a, of, of a diverse, diverse crowd to their product, which, uh, you know, right. I, I, I'm trying to do Dope. the same thing. Yeah, I, try to, I try to have 
a, a blethora of, of different crazy flavors that everybody can come in here and enjoy some. Sure. And then when it comes to meat, it's always honey, water, and... There's so many different styles of meat. Um, traditional meat, uh -huh. honey, water, yeast. That's it. This is a show meat. Right. Honey, water, yeast. Uh, that is orange blossom honey. Uh, I've won a couple of awards with that already. That's it's wow, quite really? tasty. Um, then you reach out to different categories like uh, mellow mels, which are honey and fruit. Right. And then piments are honey and grape. Okay. And then you can go into methyl glens, which are honey and herbs and spices. Oh, okay. Um, then you have different categories like botchets, where it's actually you're taking the honey or actually caramelizing it. And then you go through uh, fermentation, and you can do a little adjuncts after that as well. So you can really just go crazy with the meat. Yep. yep. It seems like the, there's no end to the combinations the, you can make. There. The canvas is empty. So Jared, thanks a lot for having us out here. And if you guys come down to Ybor City, definitely check them out. It's worth the try. Hey, this is Steve with Trivia Nation. It's time to get your think on. So I have a question about actors. What character is the only character that two different actors have won Oscars for playing him? Again, what character is the only character for which two different actors have won an Oscar for playing him? Good luck. Here at I Know Jacks, we do our best to support local businesses in the community. Visit our website to find out how we can help promote your business on iknowjax.com. Call Joe directly at 904-345-0755 or visit iknowjax.com slash advertising. Hey, this is Steve with Trivia Nation. Time to get your think on. We asked you a question, what character is the only character to have two different actors win an Oscar for playing him? The answer is Vito Corleone from Godfather 1 and 2, Marlon Brando in Godfather 1, and Robert De Niro in Godfather 2. Here at I Know Jacks, I talk a lot about eating good food, finding fun things to do in our area, and supporting our local businesses. Without locally owned and operated businesses in a community, we would lose our local flavor. You don't get local flavor from big box chain restaurants and stores. That comes from smaller local businesses. Also, when you spend money with a local business, more of that money stays in the local community. Now, my goal with I Know Jacks is to help build the local community by doing my best to promote and support local businesses and events. That's it. Now, this is how you can help. I'm starting an ambassador program. I know I've been talking about this before, but the sign up form is now on my website. The ambassador program is for people just like you who love living in our area and who love supporting the local community. You can find out more about it at iknowjacks.com slash ambassador. Celebrate the Jacksonville Farmer's Market at Moon Over the Market on November 9th at 6 p.m under sparkling lights with live music, unlimited cocktails from Island Oasis, beer from Engine 15, tastes of local food, and a student culinary competition too. Brought to you by Gastro Jacks and the Northeast Florida chapter of the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. That's it for this week's episode. As usual, you can look forward to a new insider being sent out to your inbox on Tuesday. That is, if you're a subscriber. On Wednesday, I do an online video that I call the Hump Day Update, where I talk about what's important to know for the week. And then on Friday, I do the live Facebook show at 4 p.m. That's my schedule. I'll be back here on CW17 on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Or you can watch this show online right now at iknowjacks.com slash TV show. See you next week. But before then, I'll see you on the internet.